Yes, there we go. Spawn them in. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. Yes, goodbye, combatants. Oh, God. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brute, and today we're back in the world of Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, answering one very important question. How many melons are too many melons? In order to answer this question, we're going to have to look into the deep and in-depth history that the watermelon has with the Elder Scrolls franchise, as well as its place in the veritable food chain in Elder Scrolls, and most importantly, importantly, how to break the entire reality of Oblivion in order to create more watermelons than feasibly anyone should ever have access to. All of these things and more are going to be demonstrated today, so you might want to brace yourself and grab yourself a cup of tea, because we're going to be doing some very crazy things today. So without further ado, I think it's time we dive right into this video, and for that we're going to need a brand new save file. Ah, oh, lovely, I'm excited for this. Yep, there we go, we've got the cutscene. Everyone knows the cutscene now, we don't need the cutscene. Thank you, Sean Bean. Very generous of you. Now, of course, in order to find every single watermelon in Oblivion, you're going to need a appropriate character for doing the job. For that, we need to create the Fantastic Melon Man. Someone who is quite simply a living and breathing melon. And considering there is already a race which is arguably a veritable shade of melon, this is actually a very easy job. Alright, now let's go for the shape. We've got an entire job to do. We need to make the roundest boy imaginable. Oh yes, crank that up to wide maximum. Oh, already we've kind of destroyed his nose, but it's fine, don't worry. Oh, there we go, we've just removed his chin from existence. His cheeks as well need to be nice and wide. Oh, lovely stuff, look at this. A beautiful melony man. Oh my god, we can actually have his neck go up and into his body. His neck is now reversed and there's actually a kind of like a dome underneath his chin, which is absolutely terrifying. Oh, but we've created such a beautiful man. He kind of looks like a green loaf of bread at the moment, but I'm sure he'll turn into more of a melony boy with time. Oh, and now for the nose, uh, which up until now has kind of been squished, to say the least. Well, now it is time to create Mega Nose. Oh my god, actually, I've just done the inverse. Um, apparently there's now an in-depth little gap there, where his nose kind of goes into the brain. Not really sure how it works, but it's just working. Alright, and now for some good old watermelon shading. Okay, I'm not sure if he's kind of gone from being a melon into being a shiny, shiny, shiny man. Uh, and it kind of feels like he has, to an extent. <laughs> oh god, what have I done? I don't particularly understand how the complexion slider changes the size of his face. Oh my god, but we can take him into one very wide melon here. Okay, right. This is what we're going for. It's Melon Man, ladies and gentlemen. He's probably your sleep demon, if I'm honest. Um, and if he comes to you at night and whispers things into your ears, which are terrifying, and tell you to collect the entirety of the world supply of melons, or he'll take your family away from you, then fear not, he's done it to everyone. The Melon Man is real, and you cannot escape him. So let's create a lovely orc melon man. Oh yeah, look at our sweet beautiful boy. He's amazing. Oh, he's very nice. One thing I don't recommend though is looking at the inside of his face. Um, it's a little bit, little bit disconcerting. Uh, but then most of us don't look pretty on the inside of our heads, do we? Alright, let's get on with our oblivion adventure. Oh, fantastic. Alright, they've got some people coming through here. Lovely. Hello, Emperor. Oh, you've seen me before, have you? Uh, you don't want to see that. Oh my god, he's been haunted by the melon man too. Emperor Oreo Septim, are you okay? Oh please, you cannot defeat the melon man Oreo. What's going on? All right, fantastic. I'm going to be able to go on a lovely adventure with them. Lovely stuff. Now, interestingly enough, ladies and gentlemen, I have some fun statistics to do with melons in Oblivion whilst we go through the tutorial section. You see, there are actually exactly 118 different melons inside the world of Oblivion. They have 78 different spawn locations, and because they're food, they actually respawn, meaning theoretically there are infinite melons, but with only 118 spawn locations. Now, this statistic might seem like there's a lot of melons in Oblivion, but this is actually not that many. You see, in comparison, there are 734 different apples in Oblivion. There are 614 different pieces of bread. 358 pumpkins. That's right, there's more pumpkins than watermelons. Quite possibly the only food I've found that the watermelon has an advantage on is the humble cheese wheel. You see, there are only 68 spawns of the cheese wheel in the world of Oblivion, making the watermelon technically more powerful. Now, welcome to the lovely section of the game which I call the optional increase sneak to maximum on rat section where you can basically crouch down and set the auto run key to just path you into a wall but that's not the run we're going for here today. Alright, now it's time for us to continue on our lovely adventure. Oh, fantastic. We've even found our first bits of food here. A rusty apple and what's that? A cheese wedge. Well, there's lots of cheese wedges. Not so many cheese wheels. 
They're nice and rare. Oh my god, our watermelon boy looks so stupid with a little helmet on him. Oh, he's so cute though. He's so cute. You could just squish his face together. He's so shiny as well. Light literally emanates from his body. Maybe this is what happens to you when you eat 700 watermelons or something like that. I think it's entirely biologically possible. Now, we need to continue on our lovely adventure and we've almost finished the entire tutorial section. All right, we're just up to the point where there we go. We've met the king again. Oh, there we go. Yep, we've just dropped in to save them and oh my god, that man got yeeted. Now, when it comes to picking what star sign you're going to have, you always need to pick the lover. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, it's just the best option. A free paralyzing spell. It's brilliant. All right, it's time for the adventure to continue. Oh my god, why is the emperor so goddamn smiley? Look at his happy little face. He knows he's literally about to be murdered. Oh my god. Just look at him. He's so, such a happy chappy. Oh, now you're sad. Oh, no, now he's happy. Look at that happy little smile. He's so... <laughs> it just makes no sense. Oh, my God. I love this game. It's crazy. All right, now, fantastic. We're off on our lovely adventure to escape through the sewers of the capital. Into the sewers we go. Lovely. All right, and all it takes is a little bit of a hop, skip, and a jump through all of these sewers. We don't really need anything in here. We don't particularly want to fight rats for days and days on end, so it's just a simple case of escaping. And there we go, lovely. It's the exit out into the world of oblivion. Fantastic stuff. Ah, oh, it's always such a beautiful sight. This game, considering how old it is, still actually an absolute joy to play. Uh, the clunky controls, I do admit, are a bit annoying, but beyond the clunky controls and the fact that you're going to get a hundred million quests if you have the DLC enabled, uh, the game is absolutely beautiful. It really is. I mean, just look at how fantastic the map still holds up. This really was the game changer for RPGs. It wasn't necessarily the best RPG ever made, but it was certainly a marked improvement over previous attempts. I'm not saying Morrowind's bad, I'm just saying that when you're playing a game which gives you a similar view distance to me after having about 17,000 gin and tonics on a night out, then you're kind of having a bit of an issue considering everything just becomes a bit of a blurry mess after two meters. This game, however, if you can see it, you can go over there, and I love that aspect. That truly is part of a joyous experience in an RPG. So, watermelons, where do we find our first watermelons? An excellent question, ladies and gentlemen. And there is actually several easy answers for this. What we're going to do is we're quite simply going to walk our way into the Imperial capital because we have an important meeting to get to. An important meeting with a very special individual with very interesting items and quantities of wealth. So what you're going to want to do is go to the Imperial Plaza district. It's an absolutely beautiful place. And simply run on over here to a completely hidden off house in the corner, which I've actually been to probably every single time I've played oblivion for good reason. It's Dorian's house. Dorian is of course a lovely individual. Why is he so lovely? Well, it's because he grants infinite money. Hello there, Dorian. Now naturally, if we want to steal the gold, we're going to have to start putting Paralyze onto a blade. In order to do that, we need to join the Mages Guild. Hello, Car. I'm just going to join the Mages Guild. Yes, I want to join the guild. I might look like a melon, but trust me, I'm 100% a magical dude. Right, I'm just going to walk straight through here. I don't even care what's going on over there. And then, of course, up here, we also have a Poison of Paralysis, which we're going to grab. Anyway, thank you, Mages Guild. Time for me to leave. I've stolen everything that I want to. So now that we have our lovely poisoning dagger, it's time for us to go back over to the Talos Imperial Plaza and then once again make our way over to the lovely person's house. Come on, I know it's around here somewhere. Fantastic Dorian's house. Oh, we actually have to try and lockpick to get in. Right, well, I've run out of lockpicks. This is an issue. <laughs> Guess I'm just going to have to wait. There we go. Now that I've fast traveled about to progress time, we are now able to go visit our lovely friend Dorian with our brand new poison blade. Where are you, Dorian? All right, into your house we go. Time to make sure we equip the right weapon for the job. A nice silver dagger should do the trick. And then hello there, Dorian. Now, of course, if we can bribe you, that's even better because that's more gold you have. Lovely stuff. Now, all we need to do, drop down an auto save, add some paralysis to our lovely little dagger, and then and stab him. And now that he's down on the ground, we can successfully loot him. And of course, this man has infinite money. So we're going to need kind of just enough gold in order to buy a large quantity of watermelons because, you know, we need to actually purchase watermelons and several items if we're going to achieve the ability to duplicate infinite watermelons. This game is absolutely stupid. The fact that this has now just become a classic default immediate opening move for me to do whenever I play this game is just downright stupid. And I love 
love it. I basically open up every single Oblivion game at this point by immediately going to Dorian's house and stabbing him with a poison blade. And there we go, we have 69,000 gold. I'm pretty sure this is everything we will quite possibly need throughout the entirety of Oblivion. Oh god, we've been caught. Right, um, let us, current bounty, 34,000 gold. Ooh, let us go to jail. Lovely stuff, I do love going to jail. Now all we need to do is simply wait out our sentence. And straight back out we go. But now we've 69,000 gold, because apparently we don't lose anything from going to jail beyond the occasional statistic. And now with our exceedingly large quantities of gold, we're now going to go to the Imperial City Market District to try and secure ourselves a watermelon. Now some fun facts about the history of the watermelon, they're basically entirely native to Africa, yet there is evidence of the watermelon growing in Egypt during the ancient Egyptian period, and in the 10th century it even made its way over to China, which is now the largest exporter of watermelons in the entire world. Anyway, we're going to go to the Mystic Emporium because I'm hoping that they're going to have a couple of items that I need. Hello, Clandil. Ah, oh, perfect. They have got things that I need. You see, we need basically scrolls. Any number of scrolls is enough to have infinite scrolls, and so for that reason we're going to want 16 of these Absorb Minor Magicka scrolls for only 400 gold. Lovely. We can then also pick up any other ones that kind of tickle our pickle. There's nothing too incredible here. Maybe we'll grab Shocking Touch, I guess. Lovely stuff. Thank you, Clandil. You lovely saucy sausage. Anyway, now that we have all of that, all we need is a watermelon. So, where's our nearest watermelon? Well, actually, if you go literally just across the road into Edgar's discount spells, for some reason, the man keeps a healthy supply of watermelons. So we're going to break into his upstairs house. Oh, beans, we have no lockpicks. Now, what we're going to want to do in order to gain access to his upstairs is to crouch down in this corner and hopefully summon him over to our position. Yes, because we're looking mighty suspicious right about now. Okay, now what you're going to do is run past him, do a crouch down and enter into his private area. There we go. He didn't notice us coming here. Now upstairs in Edgar's private area, you'll notice he has his lovely bed, but most importantly, look at these fine watermelon specimens. These are beautiful little saucy buggers. So yes, we're just going to steal his four watermelons, which he keeps up here for, I don't know, safekeeping. Now it's time for us to exit out of the shop. Thank you, Edgar. Your watermelons will not be missed. And now it's time for us to create infinite watermelons using a handy dandy item duplication strategy. Now, in order to duplicate whatever item you want in the game, all you simply need are a bunch of scrolls. Now, what you're going to want to do is basically drop all but one of the item that you wish to duplicate. So we're going to drop 15 Absorb Minor Magicka scrolls there on the floor, and then we're going to select the Chameleon scroll, have it selected, then hover over the actual item we wish to duplicate, hold down Shift, and then click in order to drop, and that will now duplicate the Minor Magicka scrolls. Lovely stuff, and we now have 31 Minor Magicka scrolls. Now, simply repeat the process with the Chameleon scrolls, drop 15 of them, select Minor Magicka, and then drop the Chameleon scrolls, and now we have over 30 Chameleon scrolls. This is simply how to cause crazy quantities of inflation and destroy all economy and balance in the game. Ah, 46 Chameleon scrolls. Now you can see where this is going, simply drop our Absorb Minor Magicka scrolls, all 30 of them down on the ground there, lovely. Then select your Chameleon, drop more, and bam, now 46 scrolls of Minor Magicka. The fact that this game allows you to have infinite items of any quality, as well as infinite gold, literally right out the gate is downright stupid and I love it. There we go, drop the 45 chameleon scrolls on the ground and duplicate once again. Now there's 70 of them. Oh my god, they're everywhere. Come back, chameleon scroll. Oh my goodness, I'm over encumbered. Oh my god, look at the physical weight. I have over 1,000 absorbed minor magicka scrolls. Oh beads, I'm gonna have to drop all of the chameleon scrolls on the floor. I can't move. I'm just so heavy. My god, what else can I drop? Uh, we can drop all these terrible potions that I'm never going to use. Weak potions of healing. No thank you. Right, there we go. Now we can actually move again. Now, we do have a couple of incredible benefits, which is that we now have all of these watermelons, but I realise we have actually run into an issue. Our watermelons are actually marked as stolen because, you know, I stole them. Which is an issue because stolen items can't be duplicated using scrolls. I'm going to need to use other complicated means, and by that I mean I actually need to find other watermelons. So let's go into an inn because I'm hoping that they'll have a food vendor who's more than happy to sell me some lovely watermelon. I mean, they literally have it down on the ground next to them, so surely they sell it. What do I want? I want watermelon. What have you got? You got 
Oranges, pears, pumpkins, sweet cakes, watermelons, yes! Thank goodness we have three watermelons here. I'd like to buy all three of them, you lovely, fantastic person. Goodbye, Velus. Incredible. Oh no, I'm over encumbered. I'm stuck. Right, well now I need to drop even more things. <laughs> there we go. Now I can run. So, now I have the ability to duplicate and summon 1,000 watermelons wherever I like. So let's give this bad boy a try and see if we can physically flood the entire marketplace with melons. Simply select my magical or absorption scroll and drop watermelons oh my god the game's gone game come on come on game come on i believe in you it's frozen we're now looking at the floor i can see a watermelon come on todd i believe in the game i believe in the game look at it go oh my goodness oh it's beautiful it's two thousand entire watermelons look at this beauty what an incredible thing can we actually find a tiny shop and just flood it with watermelons Ah, oh, yes, lovely. Tertullian Verus, you have a lovely little shop here, but I'm noticing it's got corn and it's got lettuces and pumpkins. I am not seeing any watermelons, and you know what that means, my friend. It's watermelon punishment time. Deploy the melon. Sorry, your entire shop is now going to be filled with melons for the next 70 years, and the game has crashed. <laughs> like, the final frame of the game there looked like it just suffered effectively a black hole of watermelons that was sucking in all of reality, and it appears to have sucked in the entire game engine of oblivion because you know it's now completely gone oh my goodness i'll be back in a second with more watermelons the adventure is not over i require more now on the topic of watermelon exploits it is actually quite a famous thing the watermelon exploit in terms of oblivion for several reasons one being because there was a actual og bug in the game which was quite possibly the easiest way to duplicate items where for some reason just about any consumable item could be used as ammunition for a bow so what you would do is you'd select your rusty iron bow then select your arrows then what you'd do is you'd basically be able to deselect an arrow and select, say, a watermelon instead. If you then had, say, a stack of 59,000 arrows and you selected the watermelon instead and fired a shot, you would instead have 59,000 watermelons spawn at the end of your shot. This led for some pretty interesting situations where you could basically go into a nice big room, fire an arrow at the ceiling, and then summon 40 billion watermelons. In our case, it leads for some pretty interesting events, like, say, all of the watermelons now in the market district. Although I have an idea. What if we go to the arena? Oh, yes. Could we just deploy watermelons in the arena. Does the game let us? All right, it's time for me to become a fighter in the arena. Lovely. Last time we did this, we absolutely smashed them with our completely overpowered stats, but that's not what I'm here for today. Instead, I'm just here to join the arena and cause chaos. All right, I'm ready for a match. Lovely. Got to wear the light armor in order to actually participate in a fight, so I'll quickly grab that bad boy. Oh, there we go. Lovely. Look at me. Uh, actually, please don't. There's just some disgusting things going on with his body, which I'm not comfortable with. Good God. <laughs> the way that his body just kind of like cuts into position. Like, his neck looks like it has just been slapped on by glue into that body. The, the two just don't match. Nothing of this body matches with anything else. Another great feature, of course, about Oblivion is that in the correct situation and lighting, people literally ascend into beyond A4 sheets of paper of white. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Just look at how this man glistens and glows in and out of reality. Alright, now of our lovely bet established, we can actually join a fight. Let's do it. I'm ready for a match. Alright, this will be one heck of a good fight. Let's do it. Let us go. Come on, my friends. Adventure time in the arena. Please ignore all of the blood. All right, fantastic. We've made ourselves into the arena, and it's time to confuse our combatants in true oblivion fashion. We might win this fight. We might not. But what we can do is cause a good bit of chaos. All right, there we go. Here they come. They're heading towards us. Right, now we must do our classic ultimate move. Select Absorb Minor Magicka Scroll, and then drop the watermelon. And now the game is having some computational issues, and it's gone. <laughs> Oh, beans, we're gonna have to try this again with less watermelons. My poor PC can't even handle a puny thousand watermelons. Pathetic. Right, here we go. It's time for our lovely fight. I'm ready for our legendary and fantastic fight. Uh, what do I have to duplicate with? Only got those thousand scrolls. Right, let me drop some of them. 12,000 scrolls. Let me drop 600 on the ground here. Okay, right, now time to build a defensive wall of 600 watermelons. Okay, game, process it, process it. There we go. I see the melon. Just summon the melon into the reality. There we go. It's now splitting just like the atom. And now this is life. We're creating life, ladies and gentlemen, at one frame a second. Here it comes. It's beautiful. It's 
terrifying at the same time. Oh my god, they're just running over the watermelons. Quick, summon more. And drop. There we go, summon more melon. They won't be able to work their way through this one. This should be the defining melon. There we go, it's duplicating. We will need to technically grab one out of the thin air. Uh, when the frames come back, oh my god, the frames. <laughs> the person is now gone. The enemy opponent, I cannot physically see them. They have become the melon. All right, we're back to the melon combat and uh, we have kind of got pushed back into this area down here. It would appear our component, oh, our combatant is actually running towards us, so we're going to have to drop more melons, as is the only way to fight them. They are coming towards us at high speed, though, so we will need to yank a melon out of the air. Oh my god, they gave us a right bash there. How many? Right, two, please. Uh, and we're going to need to drop more. Um, my goodness, they just keep coming, and they don't stop coming. Oh my god, they're like riding a surf wave of melons down towards us. Grab the melon and throw the melon. There we go, it's just spawned. It's spawned over to the right. Now, hopefully, the force of the melon might be enough to push the enemy away from us. We'll have to see. But so far, it's just spawning in more melons to come to terms with the already large quantity of melons we already have. What actually happens if I fly out of here? Let's turn off collisions. Let's have us fly away from the watermelons. Oh, my God. They're really chasing us. They're able just to climb straight out from the melons. Okay, no, they're not. Wow. Oh, my God. And the faces of the people in the arena. Now, that's, uh, that's truly terrifying. I've never seen it before. Uh, but, yes, our friend over there is in a bit of an awkward spot. Oh my god, I hit toggle free cam. And what is this? What has it given us? What is this? Is this what we look like in the arena? Are we just nothing more than arms and legs? Is that all we And some pretty kinky boots? Todd, is that what you've hidden in here? Is this the ideal form of man? Or is it Todd's ideal form of humanity? I'm not sure. It could be anything. All right, we're back and collisions back. Oh my god, and they're back. I'm gonna have to turn collision off again. Oh my god, you are one angry individual. Look at them run. They're so speedy. Like, we can just go over here into the lovely melon area. They're just straight at us. So fast. If only we could eat, say, I don't know, some melons to regain some health. Oh my god, and they just kind of phase in and out of reality as well. There's just so many of them back here. I wonder if we could actually build a wall, because so far we haven't built a perfect wall of melons. Is that just suspended melons in virtual reality? Yes, it has. Oh my god, it's just an infinite harvestable quantity of melons. It's just putting them in space. Oh, it's because I turned off collisions, that's why. Now it's spawning in the melons. Now the wall of melons comes in, and now we can drop another wall of melons on top of that existing wall of melons. Yes, there we go. Spawn them in. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. Yes, goodbye, combatants. Oh, God. They're getting closer. Can I shoot an arrow at them? Oh, my God. God, is this hell? Is this melon hell? What is this monstrosity? And there we go. I hit them with a shock spell. That was enough. One shock spell. Oh my god. I'm stuck. I'm actually stuck. I'm completely stuck. Leave the arena now. There's not a doorway. There's no doorway. It's just melon. I'm the body of the person I've killed is gone. It's just watermelons down there. Oh, it's beautiful. What a beautiful game I've created. Oh my god. What have you done, melon man? What have you done? You've turned an innocent individual into melons. There is nothing left of their physical body. It is only melon. Oh, wait, I see a leg. I see a leg in there. A single leg, melon man. Are you happy? Are you happy with yourself? Yes, I'm very happy with myself. I've done it. I've physically turned an individual into melon. Is that really something to be proud of? Who knows? Who knows? And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The adventures of the lovely melon man have come to an end. He's done an absolutely incredible job, if I do say so myself, of really increasing the quantity of melons that Oblivion has to offer. No longer are we constrained to the the simple 170 or so melons we're meant to have access to, we can now have thousands of melons at easy access for whatever occasion, and most importantly, for every occasion, whether you like them or not, there will be a melon there. No longer can the world fear starvation, for there are infinite melons. Instead, the world should fear the imminent meloning of all matter in the universe. And pro tip, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to prove that you live in the Matrix, quite simply summon 1,000 melons in thin air. And if you do live in the Matrix, the Matrix should crash, because as everyone knows, causing over a thousand melons to instantly spawn in on top of each other will crash every single game, no matter what. It is completely not a hardware oversight on Todd Howard and a lack of optimization, for Todd Howard would never create something which isn't perfect. All hail the mighty divine creator Todd. May he forever be with us. Anyway, as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. If you have indeed enjoyed watching our very strange adventure today, then feel free to give the video a like. It does massively help me out. And answer me this question. How 
many melons is too many melons? And if you answer incorrectly, you will be turned into a melon. So good luck in the comment section. And of course, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make all of these fantastic videos all the more possible. Seriously, without you, we wouldn't be able to have this level of crazy support. We've got some very wacky things coming up, including some fun Minecraft servers and so on, which I'm sure you're all aware of. That should be absolutely great fun once we've got that up and running. We should get some very, very good videos out of that as well. So keep your eyes peeled on some of the upcoming content. It should be absolutely groundbreaking for most online communities. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.